the answer to that first one? It's negative 1. It's still basically the same thing, except it's not positive now. Because 2 over negative 2 reduces to what? Negative 1. So 5 minus 9 over 9 minus 5 reduces to negative 1. Which means if there's a variable involved, can you cross that out? As long as you take note that what needs to be there? A negative. Because these will give you the same number, but one will be negative and one will be positive. Okay? So, let's apply that. Z squared W minus Z squared over Z cubed minus Z cubed W. First off, are those the same thing? No. No, because the Z's are not the same. You've got a squared and a cubed. Thank you, Nick. That was very just, he knows what he knows. What were the three words? Uh, factor, yeah, yeah, restrict, cancel. So we need to start with factoring. How are we going to factor the first one? Z. Take out some Z's. Okay, last hour somebody said it's the difference of two perfect squares. No, it's not because of this W. Okay, so we can, though, factor out a Z squared, right? Which leaves me with W minus 1. Because z squared times w gives me z squared w. And z squared times negative 1 gives me negative z squared. In the denominator, what can I factor out? A z cubed. Which leaves me with 1 minus w. Can we factor? What's the second word? Restrict. Okay, I have two letters in the denominator. What can Z not equal? Uh, minus one. Plus one. Z cannot equal zero. Z. Z cannot equal zero. And what can W not equal? One. Because one minus one would give me zero. All right? Now, applying what we just learned in the slide right before. Is W minus 1 divided by 1 minus W going to give you the same number? Just we need to take into account that it's going to be negative, right? So I can cancel them, but whenever I do, I need to multiply by a negative or put a negative somewhere. Okay, it turns the fraction negative. Now what about the Z's? Can they be reduced? Z squared cancels with two of these, leaving me with one. So what's left in the numerator? Negative one, and in the denominator, Z. So that fraction reduced to negative one over Z. As long as Z was not zero, I'm sorry, not equal to zero, and W was not equal to one. Factor? Restrict, cancel. Factoring is not a new skill. Restricting is not a new skill. And canceling is not a new skill. We're just putting them all together. All right? Also, when you factor, you've got to factor completely, which doesn't apply to this one, but it will in a second. I'm going to show you all something on this one. I'm going to allow you all to, quote, unquote, cheat on this one. All right, factor the numerator. How do you factor that? Take out a six, a walk, no, not a six, three. three, 
sorry, and a y squared, which leaves you with 2y minus 3. Okay, we are simplifying this fraction, so something's going to cancel here, right? And when I factor the denominator, I'm not going to have a simple monomial. I'm going to have two binomials. Well, if something's going to be canceling, I bet you one of them is this. Because that's what's going to cancel. So here's your little cheat. You already know one factor of this trinomial. Now, to figure out the other factor, you just ask yourself, what times 2y would give me 2y squared? And what times negative 3 would give me negative 12? And then you just double check to make sure that that middle term comes out right. Yes? A lot of times. Not always, but a lot of times. If all you have is one group up here, then you know one of them is going to be that group. Okay? Plus 8 minus 3 gives me what? Plus 5. See, so it worked out. It's a little cheap. Okay, we factored. Now we're going to restrict only the denominator. What can y not equal? And positive 3 halves. Now, what can cancel? And that's it. And you just write what's left. 3y squared over y plus 4. <laughs> and your restrictions follow the semicolon. Three y squared over y plus four. Now, the reason we're learning how to do this is because in just like a week or two, we're going to be solving equations that have these things in. Them. All right. But we got to take this one step at a time. All right. Now, everybody, take a deep breath because we're about to change gears. But don't lose what we just did. What's the difference between this and the other thing that we were just doing? They're multiplying. They're no, there's no plus and minuses. It's straight multiplying. Okay? All right, now this is a very simple fraction where all we have to do is multiply straight across, like on the little worksheet I showed you. Just because there's numbers and letters now, it doesn't change the process. Okay, but here we're going to cancel before we multiply. As long as there's no plus sign in between, I can cancel. Okay, so if I just look at these terms, 4 and 16, as long as one's at the top and the bottom. Can 4a and 16a cubed reduce? Well, 4 goes into 16 how many times? 4 times. And this a can cancel with one of these, leaving me with a squared. What about 5 and 15? Leave it on the bottom. Yeah, leave it on the bottom. Because it's bigger. Because it's bigger at the bottom. 15 is bigger at the top, right? So when I cancel, it's going to be at the top. Because 5 goes into 5 once and goes into 15 three times. And how many, where do I have more Bs? At the top. How many more Bs? One more B. I forgot. To, what did I forget to do? There's no addition or subtraction, so both A and B simply cannot equal zero. Sorry. All right, and all we have left to do is write what's left. It's not too bad, huh? No. Okay, now look at these two. What's the difference between this problem and the one right before? No, it's division. Okay, we'll think back to the little piece of paper. Flip the second one, change to multiplication, and do what we just did. 